Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our latest how-to um, webinar, which uh, delights to, as you can see, I'm with Laura Norman today. Uh, we're going to look at how to get the most from your social media platforms. So as ever with any of these live videos, if anyone's got any questions or comments or, or queries, please you know, feel free to put them in the comment box and we'll we'll try to cover as many of them as we can as we go through um, or, and or at the end. Um, so the nature of this, I know not a number of people will watch this kind of on demand, uh, whether it's on the social media platforms or maybe on the YouTube channel. So again, if you do have any questions, please you know, let, let us know afterwards and I'm sure I can either hand it or pass it over to Laura at a later date and we, we can try and answer that for you. So I will stop talking for now and I'll hand you over to Laura. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself, Laura, and then we can, we can go into the session? Yeah, sure. So uh, thanks for that, Mike. I'm Laura Norman. I run Chroma Marketing. We're a team of marketing consultants uh, who specialise in supporting small business owners with their marketing strategy. Um, and like Mike has said, I'm going to be taking you through a few kind of tips, really, on how to get the most from your social media platforms. Um, when kind of pulling this idea together for a, a how to, we were thinking more along the lines of you know, there's a lot of people that know social media, people are familiar with the platforms, but for me, it, what this is hopefully gonna do is just help you get that little bit more from them. Um, so that when you're running campaigns or trying to reach your audience, you've got extra options of uh, how to engage with people and, and that kind of thing. So that's what I'm gonna try and teach you all today. <laughs> um, that's absolutely really Laura. And as you said, you know, this is very much a kind of a snapshot as a starting point for anyone, I'm sure Laura will be, be happy to answer any questions you have. So, yeah, if you shall, I uh, shall I bring the presentation up, Laura? Am I ready to go? Yes, please. Yeah. So, uh, like I say, this is all about getting the most from your social media platforms. Like I've just said, a lot of people understand social media and are familiar with the different tools that are available. But what I'm kind of trying to do with this is sneak past that kind of understanding. Also, there's a lot of updates for social media and a lot of things change very often. So uh, what I'm gonna try and do is just give people a bit of an overview of each platform and what you can do with them, but then also um, give you some extra kind of tips. Um, I don't really like using the word hack, but the, the tips that there are to get more from it. So uh, as Mike said, if anybody's got any questions as we go, just let me know. So quick statistic, um, there are now 4.2 billion active social media users. Uh, that's twice as many as there were five years ago. So if you think about all the kind of younger generation coming through, more and more people getting familiar with how the different platforms work and how they can apply that to business. Um, those users spend an average of two and near enough a half hours uh, a day on social media. Uh, that's every single day. So that's two and a half hours of your kind of uh, two, two and a half hours that your audience are potentially active that you may or may not be tapping into. So what we're gonna do is understand where they could be active, how those kind of platforms work or key features. And then we're gonna look at some um, features that I think not many people or not enough people know about that can be used. And I'll take you through some of those. It's gonna be quite a whistle stop tour. We're gonna go quite quick with this because I think it's, it's one of those things that you can watch it once and then grab a pen and paper and go through it and apply it then and there. Uh, so we're going to keep it quite quick. But like I say, any questions, just let us know. So we're going to start with Facebook, one of the oldies and goldies. Um, with this, some key features, you've got your page itself. Uh, this is a company page. Aside this with this, what I'm thinking of is business rather than an individual. So you tend to find that a business will have its own page. That page then has its own page feed, which is where, um, similarly to your news feed on a mobile app or on a desktop, when you're logged in personally, you can actually find the same thing, but for your page itself. And what you can then do is engage with other people and other businesses as your business, rather than having to kind of comment and like things as your own personal profile. So it's a really interesting and useful place to have, uh, kind of look at on Facebook. You've also got groups, which is a really key uh, part of Facebook. It's one of the biggest parts that Facebook are exploiting moving forward because it's one of the places they see meaningful conversation happening, um, following this and that issue that the platform has had. Uh, what they have fairly recently done is you'll notice as you're scrolling through your feed, you will see more interaction of people in groups. And that's because, that, like I say, they see it as a place of having meaningful conversation. So if you're active in groups, you will find that you can place yourself within similar communities. So whether that's small businesses, whether that's um, ethical businesses, whether that's networking, there are lots of options of different communities that you can join as a business um, and meet new people. Similar to, I guess, 
a digital version of networking, but it's more social networking. Um, so groups are a really great place to position yourself. And then you've also got the creator studio, which is something that Facebook is gradually making um, more user friendly, what I would say. Um, you, you might find that certain parts of your apps versus de desktop look slightly differently, uh, different, sorry. And that's because the creator studio is gradually being phased into more and more people as the place to create and publish your content rather than business manager and all of those different things. So there's more you can do within uh, Create Studio. It's like I say, it's becoming much more user-friendly um, and hopefully that will continue. Um, but it's something to look at. There's apps for it and there's uh, you can get into it via the desktop version as well. So there are your key features of Facebook that I would say as a business, you should be aware of. With this, we're gonna look at specifically the pages feed and how to find that because it's kind of a bit of a hidden gem, really. Um, having had the experience of you've got your personal profile, you don't necessarily want to do all of your business interactions as your personal profile, because that's maybe where your family are, where your friends are that don't necessarily have a connection to what you do in business. And what some people don't want to do is create an extra profile that is just for the business um, in order to get that engagement. So this is a very much a happy medium, really, where the pages feed sits. Like I mentioned before, you as your page have a feed, you can follow other businesses, which means you can then see their content, you can engage with their content. So if you're thinking prospects, if you're thinking people in your network, potential prospects or even clients that you just want to support on social media, you can add them into your pages feed and follow them on your page feed and engage with them. And it's a really good way of building those relationships on Facebook. And I think that's something that many people think is missing from Facebook as pages is that engagement and actually seeing other pages uh, content to engage with. So this is a really good medium. And I think it's something that more people could and should be aware of. And this is how you find it. So um, if anybody wants these screen grabs afterwards, please just let me know. Um, but basically, you follow these steps. So you, on your mobile device, clearly, click on the page. So obviously, I've clicked on Chroma Marketing. When you get into the page, this is what you'll see. And what you want to do is scroll along these menu options at the top here until you see um, settings or more. It might come up with more as well. And that's what this brings up. And what you want to click on, funnily enough, is Pages Newsfeed. Um, and within this pages newsfeed, this is what you'll see. So it's another feed all full of um, content from businesses that you're following. You can comment as your page, which is what the icon here, um, the Chroma logo with the little arrow next to it at the bottom of a post that shows that you're engaging as the business page rather than as yourself. So make sure that's selected and then you can comment, like, share, and it will be commented, liked or shared as you, as your business profile. So that's how you find your pages feed. So like I said before, click on the pages tab at the bottom of the mobile app, scroll through until you see kind of more or settings, uh, click on pages feed and this is your pages feed. I would say you really need to be spending time on this every day. Um, as you, this is one of those habits that I would tag into things like answering your emails in the morning uh, or when you go on LinkedIn, do the same with Facebook because the more you can engage with those people, the more visible you are. Um, and it makes it much more of a two-way conversation between you and those people, rather than you kind of waiting for people to engage with your content, you're taking that first step um, and, and giving back to the people that are connected to you and you're connected to them. So that's how you find your pages feed. Um, anybody that's not done that so far, I would actively advocate doing that. Um, and then there's some quick tips for Facebook. So I would say one of the biggest questions I get re and have been getting recently is where do I schedule my content? What should I use to schedule my content? I am a, a very much an advocate of scheduling content because it makes life easier. Um, I would say the best place to do this for Facebook is within Facebook. Um, so I would do it via the Creator Studio if you can. Um, then the one of the biggest kind of things people miss, it links back to that engagement piece that I was just talking about, is actually engaging with people. Um, I think with Facebook, there's this kind of perception that it will just happen for you. If And if you don't engage with other people, it doesn't make a difference. Well, it does. And one of the biggest things that people forget to do is if somebody comments on your post, make sure you're commenting back to say something to keep the conversation going. Or even if it's just a thanks for engaging with it, really appreciate you sharing this, whatever that is. 
make sure you're commenting back to people. The more you engage with other people, the more engagement that then um, kind of produces down the line. So think about how you're actively kind of nurturing people to engage with your content by engaging with them. Um, like I've mentioned before, engage with your page news feed uh, to make sure your business is engaging with your network and prospects and so on. And then the final thing, I've mentioned groups already, but I would just make sure you're posting within local groups fairly regularly and making sure they're the ones that are relevant. So I would avoid, unless you sell a product, I would avoid the kind of typical buy and sell Facebook group because the, the conversation isn't two way there. What I would advocate is joining groups which have a community around them and you're part of that community. So for instance, there's a, a group that's been created, I'm gonna name drop here by a guy called Will Saunders, all about ethical business. And if that's up your street, it's those kinds of groups that you wanna be joining because you can then join in the conversation. And I would say try and post within those groups regularly. I'm, I'm suggesting here once a week uh, just to have that conversation. And when I say once a week, make it part of your kind of admin routine when it comes to things like um, emails, add that time on at the end to just stick a post in there. And it doesn't even have to be anything new. It could be something you've already created for another place. Um, just to get into those habits. And that's where you're going to get them from these platforms because it boils down to consistency. So that's Facebook. Then we've got Instagram. Um, business to business people, I am aware that you may be sat there thinking, why on earth is Instagram relevant for me? Um, because in answer to that question, Instagram is a place of business people as well as it is of consumers. Um, there are quite a lot of small businesses hanging out on Instagram, whether that's the individual that runs the business as their kind of personal brand or whether that's the business themselves. Um, so it's useful to know the key features. There's been a lot added to Instagram in the last three months, let alone a year. Um, so you've got your profile itself, which is where you upload your own content. That's where you've got your bio and your web link and everything like that. Then you've got stories, which last 24 hours, it's much more about that kind of live behind the scenes kind of content, quick fire stuff. You can highlight it if people want to refer back to it later. So it kind of pins it to the top of your profile. Uh, but stories are much more personable and it's a way to get across that personality behind the brand. IGTV is for any video that's longer than a minute. Um, and then you've got Reels, which is one of their newest uh, features. And Reels are 15 to 30 second long videos. Again, it's very good for showcasing personality, whereas IGTV might be a bit more corporate feeling or even just an explainer video or a how-to like this. Uh, your reel might be much more kind of quirky, quick tips. Um, they don't all have to be the silly dancing kind of style ones. They can be quite informative. Some of the best um, and well-followed brands on Instagram or people on Instagram are those that give off information through their reels because it's really easy bite-sized chunks of information. Uh, another of their newest features is guides. Um, guides are an amalgamation of several pieces of content in one place. So what you can do if you say have um, posted a few things about how to get the best out of social media, what you can do is pin all of that content into a guide. They can click on the guide and see all of the relevant uh, posts. So essentially what you're able to do is create a guide of content that's already been written rather than you having to I don't know, build a PDF document with all of these tips in, you can just pin all of that, those tips into one place when they've already been shared. Um, it's still quite new guides. I would say people are still figuring guides out. So if you're not quite sure how they work, I would observe other people and how they use them to see and get ideas of how you can use them as well. And then we've got the shop. Uh, the shopping function is what it says on the tin, really. It's a shopping facility where you can buy directly through Instagram rather than having to go through people's websites for their products. And what I'm going to show you with Instagram as a kind of key feature is something called Linktree. And I'm going to use a Northern Affinity member example here. Um, Linktree, one of the biggest issues with Instagram is that links in captions aren't clickable. So if you put a link in your caption, people can't actually click that link to go through to whatever you're trying to put. And the other kind of downside of the platform is that you are only able to have one link in your bio. What Linktree is, is an external piece of kit which allows you to pin several links into one place. It's a bit of a landing page um, so that people can click the link in your bio as you tell them in your call to action. But actually, they can click on different things because if you uh, want, if you talk about 
say you talk about the, the YouTube videos that Mike puts out and then there's an event that's coming up that people might also want to see and so on. Instead of having to switch your bio every time you want to mention a new thing, what Linktree allows you to do is put it all in one place. And this is how this is what it looks like. So basically the link in the bio is a Linktree link and it opens up when people click on it, this landing page, which just has a list of all of the different um, links that you might send people to. Within Linktree itself, you can rejig the order. So if you know that um, in July, you're gonna be focusing on um, the free trial, you can make that top, uh, top and center. So that's the first thing that people see. Um, you can add in, you can delete, um, and you can kind of amend it as you go. And this, when people then click through, means it's still within Instagram, so people aren't being taken away from your Instagram profile, uh, but they can then go to that link uh, pretty easily from directly within your Instagram page. So if you know that you're gonna be directing people to a lot of different types of content, I would definitely look at getting Linktree set up. It's really easy and it's free um, within certain parameters. So I would give it a try and it saves people having to try and find the right information or kind of hunt through things and you also having to do a load of admin to change things as you go. So I would advocate Linktree if you know you're gonna be sending people to uh, various places. And then some quick tips for Instagram. Um, and then we'll pause for any questions if there are any. Um, for Instagram, the other kind of, I guess, key thing that gets missed, and I mentioned it with Facebook, is that piece of engagement. Now, Instagram is a hugely engaged platform. Um, if you're not spending time engaging with other people, you're massively missing out when it comes to Instagram. And this kind of breakdown, this five-step routine, I'm not saying it, it's not come from Instagram itself. It's something that we've pulled together as a really good way of building it into a habit. Um, if you can get into the habit of following the five-step routine, even if to start with it's just once a week and then you build it every few days and then every day, you'll naturally find that actually you're more tuned into that engagement piece. Um, so what this first one, step five, is follow five profiles within your target audience or strategic partners. What that means is that you're having to focus on the right people and being connected to the right people within the platform itself and it stops you from kind of following people that maybe aren't so relevant to your audience aren't going to add value to yourself step four engage with four people's posts in your feed a really good engagements are comments shares to story saves they're the types of engagements you want to be looking at now we want to kind of move away from likes because likes don't really do anything for anybody um and they're gradually being phased out of Instagram and, and Facebook and so on. Um, visibility, so comment, share, save posts, engage with four people, make sure you're engaging in a way that's meaningful so you're adding to the conversation rather than just a this is great to see, it's more of a conversation. Um, then you wanna be thinking about responding to three people's Instagram stories. If you can get into the, the direct message, the DM uh, of people, you're adding to that relationship. So an easy way of doing that is replying to people's stories. And it also means you're watching people's stories as well. Uploading two stories a day, you wanna be, that ring around your story should be lit up as often as it can be. And if you can post more stories in that day, more people are more likely to see your feed posts and so on. Um, and then you've got that one post a day. So I'm not saying this is like gospel, but gradually get through those uh, five steps and make that into a habit and you'll get more kind of tuned into that engagement piece. Um, similarly to Facebook as well, make sure that anybody who comments on your post gets a response as soon as pot possible. And the final piece is hashtags. Um, hashtags, we could do a whole other presentation on, but what we wanna talk about here is making sure you're using the space available to you. So use five to 30 hashtags, which is your maximum, within your posts, make sure they're branded, relevant to your audience, related to your key phrases and keywords, because that's what's gonna make you visible when people are searching for things. The other thing to note is that people can follow hashtags. So the more like the more you use those hashtags, the more likely people are to see your content for that hashtag. So they're just some quick kind of uh, tips when it comes to Instagram. Um, the main thing here being engage with the profile, the platform. Are there any questions at all so far, Mike? So, but what I want to do is kind of back up a couple of points you made really there around, firstly, 
link tree. We, we use that and it's been really, really good. Um, like mm-hmm. it kind of creates a mini landing page, which has been fantastic. And the second point around business to business on Instagram. Yes. Now, what we've found is since we've upped our activity on there over the last few months and, and doing more of the things that you've talked about is that strangely enough, I very rarely have a lead come through Instagram. However, mm-hmm. I've had a number of leads come through all sorts of different locations. I, I have had one person email me on LinkedIn saying, I've seen you on Instagram. Um, we've mm-hmm. had a couple of website inquiries that following further discussions, I found that they've seen our Instagram um, uh, output. So, so I think it's um, it's one of those that seems to be, may, may, you might not directly get lead on there, but it's a fantastic place as a profile building. So, you know, we're, we're very much a business to business business and it works yeah. fantastic for us. And, and, and there's probably more that I'm not aware of. They've just come through conversations that I know I've had. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a really, I would, Facebook don't hate on me for saying this, but I much prefer it to Facebook. I think it's a much more user friendly um, platform. And the thing that you'll get from Instagram is more people having conversation. Um, like I mentioned before, the bit that people often find is missing with Facebook is that interaction with other people. Whereas actually Instagram is great for this. It's a really good source of information. It's a great place if you're passionate about something specific like that's climate change or you know mental health. There's a lot of people that you can build a really solid community around uh, with this and similarly for business. Um, so like you say, while it might not be the direct place that you're getting leads, actually it's quite a good one for building your profile and credibility um, when those leads then do come through. So yeah, absolutely. So next platform is Twitter. So we're going to go through some key features again. So you've got your profile itself. You've got your feed, which is the kind of endless stream of information. And, you know, you know what it's like with Twitter. It's so fast paced. There's a lot there. But um, all of that information, that's your feed. You've then got lists, uh, which I'm going to talk about shortly. Um, Topics. Topics are key things that you can essentially say that you're interested in. And what Twitter does, which I'll talk a bit more about later, is they will kind of refine your feed based on the topics that you say you're interested in. You've then got direct message, uh, which is what it says on the tin, and fleets, which is Twitter's version of stories. That's probably their first major update in years. (laughs) Um, And it functions in in very similar way to LinkedIn stories and Instagram stories. Um, It's a kind of short term piece of content that you can put on your profile. So the bit that um, we're going to dive into here is lists. Now, every time we do a digital review for somebody and I know they're on Twitter, I'll ask the question, have you ever come across Twitter lists? And 99.9% of people say no, which blows my mind because it's one of the most useful things that Twitter has on its profile. And I can see Mike nodding his head. I know you use them um, because I think I'm even in part some of yours. Um, And this is basically, before I kind of go into showing you how to set them up, it's kind of like pinning people into a new feed. So what you can do is go onto somebody's profile and say, do you know what? You're in my Northern Affinity Network. So I'm gonna add you to my Northern Affinity list. And what you create when you create a list is a funneled feed. It's the easiest way I can explain it. So you can add somebody to your list and you can add several people within the Northern Affinity to that Northern Affinity list. And when you click into that list, the only content you will see are people within that list. So if, for instance, you want to create, um, say you're from, you work heavily within the manufacturing sector and you know you want to engage more with people from the manufacturing sector because there are X, Y, and Z hashtag um, things that you can get involved with and you want to meet more people. Okay, what you can do is create a list of all of those manufacturing people and essentially it's a really time effective way of engaging with the right people on Twitter and I can hear you asking so this is how you create them so um what you do is you go into your profile settings so you click on the settings and this is again on mobile um and you click on lists and this is what you would see if you have lists linked to your profile obviously this discover new section so if I wanted to join the Yorkshire news um list I can follow that list as well When you create a list, which is the little blue button in the bottom right hand corner, this is what comes up and you fill all of that information out. Um, You can make it private. I um, 
wouldn't unless it's for a specific reason. Making it private means obviously you're the only one that can see it. So uh, if you want it to be more communal, keep it public. Um, so add the right information, add your branding to it if you want to and create your list. And then what you can do is when you click onto somebody's profile and click the little blue, the, sorry, the little circle with the three dots in the top right hand corner, it comes up with the menu and you can add and remove them from a list. If you click on add and remove from list, it comes up with this bar here. Um, and I could add them to marketing in the UK because maybe uh, the Northern Affinity talk about marketing. Um, you can add them to several lists. You can add them to more than one or you don't have to add them to any, but you can also view the lists that they have as well. So I could click on uh, the Northern Affinities lists and see any that uh, are public that have been created by Mike and the team. And like I say, when you then go into the list, it's, that, it's just a funneled feed of all of those people that you've tagged into that list content. So instead of endlessly trawling through that very long list of Twitter content, um, you can find stuff that's really relevant to you at the time. And again, if you can add in that uh, piece of engagement by going into those lists, scrolling through and engaging with whatever's relevant into your morning routine or maybe your lunchtime routine, it's another job off the list really, really quickly and efficiently. But actually, you're building that visibility because you're engaging with more people. And it kind of ticks off that thing of how do I make Twitter more engaged and more effective, um, which can seem a bit overwhelming sometimes. So if you haven't already played around with lists, I would highly recommend doing so because it's a massive time saver. Um, and then just some quick tips. So Twitter, realistically, you should be posting on Twitter five times a day. Now that can seem how on earth do I create five pieces of content every single day for Twitter? This is a kind of um, goal. You can post more than this as well. This isn't a kind of limit. This is a minimum, really. Um, but build up to it. I'm not saying jump straight into doing that now. Build up to that level of content. Um, and the reason for that is just because, like I said before, the profile is uh, the platform is that fast paced that if you're not posting regularly enough, you just won't get seen. Um, and again, another name drop here, I would consider using a tool like Social Sender to schedule that extra content. Social Sender is an amazing tool. If you've not spoken to Michelle Cohen um, and had your demo yet, definitely jump, in, jump into that. Um, Social Sender is a slightly different type of scheduling tool because it creates the content for you. So actually, that job of posting into Twitter five times a day suddenly gets a lot, lot easier. Um, Spend time each day engaging with the content of others. Use your lists. Um, good types of engagement with uh, Twitter uh, retweets with captions as well. If you can kind of repurpose the content to your own style, that's great. And also just commenting on other people's stuff to join the conversation. Like I've said already, create Twitter lists. And then the other piece here is follow topics to help Twitter refine and define the content and ads that you see on your feed. So basically keep your feed as, as relevant as possible. Um, so then we're going into LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, business to business heaven. Um, key features, you've got your profile itself. You've got pages, uh, business pages, which more and more features are being added to. The woman to speak to about this is Judy Parsons, if you want to get more familiar about this. Um, but you've got pages and like I say, more and more features are being added into them to make them a bit more user friendly. You've got the message function, which is a really great place to have conversation with people, um, especially people maybe you've not met before. Uh, events, again, it's a really useful. You can link in Eventbrite in there and any other, you know, uh, event ticketing system. Um, listing your events, you can invite people directly into those events. You can talk to people within those in a kind of confined messaging system. Uh, and then you've also got groups, which function very similarly to Facebook groups. Um, you have also got stories, which I've not included in there. They are, again, quite a new feature like um, Twitter's fleets, I would say. Again, if you're not too familiar with how they work, observe, uh, see how other people are using them. And what I'm going to kind of go into with LinkedIn is how interactive and useful the search function is for LinkedIn. Um, if you've sat there thinking, Do you know what, it'd be really great to be connected with more people in sales, or I would one of our key strategic partners are people that work in printing. The search facility in LinkedIn is one of the most intuitive out there. So I would kind of use it and get familiar with the, the, um, the filtering system and the way it all works as much as possible. 
so this is just an example of the kinds of things you can look at to get the information you need from um, LinkedIn. So typing in the keyword sales, obviously it brings up a few key people that I'm connected to, but then actually I wanna know different people. So once I've searched what you can do, there's the little three lined uh, filter option at the top. This brings up all of these different filter options. So you can look at people who are connected to your connections, so your second connections. Um, you can look specifically. So if I know that Mike is connected to a certain person, I wanna find that person, I could put Mike's name in here. You can search by location, by where they work now, where they've previously worked. Maybe they're an ex-colleague of yours and you want to reconnect because they've moved into a different um, position and so on. And then it brings up all of these wonderful 34,000 people that you can engage with and connect with to uh, have conversation. So get familiar with the LinkedIn search function. It's a really useful thing for expanding your network um, and reaching new people, especially if you're trying to reach a certain type of prospect from an industry specific couple of quick tips from LinkedIn. Um, complete your profile. I don't think I can shout this enough. Um, LinkedIn gives you space. It gives you a lot of space to talk about what you do, why you're valuable to your audience and so on. So the easiest way I can explain this is start at the top, work your way down all of the key areas of LinkedIn on your own profile and fill in the blanks. If there's anything that you've not got information in, get it filled in. Uh, Optimise your page for SEO. So Thinking keywords is really important as based on the search functions, it's really useful to make sure you've got all of your keywords and phrases within the key areas of your profile, like your about section and your headline. Add your LinkedIn button to your website homepage so that people can connect with you on there from your website if they get there first or if they go to your website to validate you. Um, and join groups of like-minded business people uh, and communities based on your values. We've got one extra snippet here, TikTok, which um, you, again, maybe sat there thinking, what on earth is she talking about this for? Um, it's just a quick overview, really. Uh, if you're not familiar with TikTok, like I said, I've said with a couple of other platforms and their features, observe for a little while, see how other businesses are using it because they are there. TikTok is one of the most engaged platforms with certain generations. Um, and if you're targeting those generations, it is a really useful place to be. So key features you've got, who you're following, as in, sorry, the content that you're seeing, you're following, but then you've got the follow um, you, for you page, which is the page of content that TikTok generates based on what they see you engaging with in your following stream. You've then got the inbox and then you've got your own profile of your own content as and when you decide to put that up. I've included a brief step-by-step -step of kind of how to get started with TikTok because I'm aware that it is quite a new concept for quite a few people. Um, so what I would say here is get comfortable with how the platform works, observe it. You don't have to jump straight in because it can be quite overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff there. So just observe, get to grips with how it works. Choose your niche. Um, TikTok is the place to create a niche around your content. So if you're going to talk about a certain type of plumbing fixtures and how to fit them, go for it and make that your niche. And that's what people will then engage with you for. I mean, there's loads of kind of examples like there's a guy that does cleaning people's pools there's a guy that um judges people's uh like pantries there's all sorts of random niches but actually that's what gets them the following because it's quirky content so think about what your niche is and how you can create content around that um then you want to decide how often you're going to post um and keeping that consistent is really really key for tiktok and again it's quite a busy one so you can kind of post I'd say five times a day and that's not too much because it's really short and snappy content. Um, don't worry about being perfect as well. This is a really big one. Um, it's really important that you can find your own tone of voice and get that across in the most effective way. And that doesn't have to be perfection. Um, and actually it might get you brownie points if it's not perfect. Um, and a really big one for TikTok is listen to the music trends that are going around. You'll find that people use the same music um, listen to those and plan your content around them so that you then have more chance of being seen and heard. And then a couple of bonus tips. Um, ensure that any graphic images you're using any on any social media is consistently branded. Use something like Canva to do that. You can input your font and colors there so that you're adding value to your branding um, in your content. And then try and mix the different types of content you're using between images, photos, video, written content, just to keep people on their toes really. Uh, and keep that engaged audience. 
Matt is everything. Thanks That's very great, much. Laura. Well, thank you very much. Now, I've got a quick question actually about LinkedIn, if you don't mind. Go um, for it. LinkedIn company page has probably historically been something that most people can agree on. It was kind of a waste of time. There wasn't much benefit from it apart from a, a presence, really. It mm -hmm. feels like at the mo recently they've spent a lot of time adding functionality and various things. Do you think it will become bigger and more important part of LinkedIn as, as we go forward? I think they will, but I think for different reasons. And I'm hoping they keep um, – I think the benefit of LinkedIn is that you're a person rather than a business profile. So I think they will become more prominent, but I think for different reasons to why people use the personal ones. Uh, I think that would be the sensible move. Obviously, I can't judge <laughs> what they're going to do. You never know with these companies. But I think there's going to be more functionality from them, especially. I guess it could be like, um, you know, we, we if you go on Twitter, as an example, it's the place if anyone wants to complain about a brand, generally they go on mm. Twitter, it's the place to go. Well, yeah. I guess LinkedIn could become for business to business organizations mm. that equivalent, really, kind of like a, a customer help type section, really. Mm. That, that that could be a functionality. So that's the way I kind of see it potentially going. Yeah. I think I think you're right. I think the, the kind of premise, I guess, from LinkedIn pages that I've gauged from it is that so far it's mainly just been about hiring people um i think potentially uh, because of the events function there might be more to do with kind of business um maybe more corporate brands so maybe you're right having some form of customer service function on there would be um useful even if that's just a messaging system people can get in touch if they need anything and um, maybe a bit of a mini landing page kind of website style might be the way they go. Um, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, but I just hope, <laughs> pray, that they don't lose the value that people get from the personal profiles on there because that's where I think a lot of the relationships come from. I don't think pages have had any hand in that, really. Um, so I, we'll I would completely completely agree with you on that. And um, yeah, there's been some really, really good tips out. Laura, thank you very much. That's, that's been really, really yeah. useful. So, um, and if, some, if anyone wants to find out a little bit more about you or ask any questions, where what are the best places where they where to go for that? I mean, we're everywhere. Um, but I would say um, website is always a good place to start. We've just launched our new website. Um, the link is is there. Um, we've just launched that. We've got some new resources and things on there. So if there's anything we can help with, get touch with get in touch with us there. Otherwise, I'm always on LinkedIn. Uh, you'll more often than not find me on LinkedIn. So it's just Laura Norman. Um, and yeah feel free to get in touch. And like I say, if anybody wants any of the kind of screenshots from before, let me know. Yeah, and just to let anyone know, if anyone wants to watch this in the back as well, it will stay on the social media platforms. It'll also be on our YouTube channel as well. We'll, we'll get that done in the next day or so, so if people want to, to watch it back. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention, I want to back up your um, point about Twitter lists, actually. Mm. It's, I, think, I think it is one of the best piece of functionality on Twitter and underused. Um, you know, for me, we've, we've got a lot of people in the Northern Affinity to create a separate news feed that allows me to look at the content that's going out for the guys, share it, comment on it, and help them mm. is invaluable. And I'm sure there's all sorts of different applications um, for, for that as well. Um, yeah. So we've had a couple of people saying thank you. <laughs> Great work, by the way. So uh, Abigail, thank so thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and also Sarah as well. Thanks, uh, guys. <laughs> so that's really nice feedback at the end. So that's really, really good. So, um, yes. yeah. Thank you so much, Laura, for, for your time. Um, no really, really appreciate it. Like I said, anyone wants to watch it back, it will be on various platforms. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I look forward to, to seeing everyone soon. So thank you very much, Laura. Thank you.